Jane Brown. Three love. She's looking absolutely dominant. The Grand Slam beckons Graf now for Steffi Graf. It's interesting to me that they play so little between Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. The men, of course, have a whole series of championships right here in the U.S.A. and Canada that they play in, and most of them play quite a bit in preparation for the Open. The Virginia Slim Circuit also has many tournaments, but we find some of the women really only want to play one or two weeks. Seventeen is not getting to the ball anymore, and when you Love can't get to 30. the ball, you just start hitting the ball later and later, and then the ball keeps going very, very deep. Or if you can't get up to the short one, it goes in the net usually. She's exhausted. I can't understand how somebody 18 years old can be tired. That was a very tired shot. That that ball kept dropping and Love kept 40. going forward. There you see the Grand Slam winners. Not included there. Well, there's Rod Laver, the third person down, when he was an amateur in 62 and as a pro in 69 when he came back to Wimbledon in 1968 when we had open tennis. But not included there, Martina Navratilova, and as we said, won six titles in a row, and I think she'd be aggrieved not to be on that caption list. 15-40. Actually, Martina's very good about it. She said it depends on your perception of, I mean, like Cliff thinks it should be in the same year, she said, I didn't make it. Very clear. Sabatini had come to 30, net more often 40. than the first and second sets. I don't think she'd be half as tired as this. That's Pavel Slozel, the coach of Steffi Groff. The hitting coach, yeah. as Mr. Groff would say. Deuce. shot at a critical time for Sabatini. She doesn't hold on to serve here. This match will be history, surely. Four games to love, two serve breaks. But this is game point. ball dropped too low. She didn't Deuce. get up to the ball. When you get tired, you just don't you just don't make that extra effort with your feet. You feel like your legs are two tons. It's a terrible feeling. We've all had it. Don't you think she's going to take some more risk, Cliff? Yeah, I, mean, I do. I think, I think I if she's tired, you're going to have to go for more big serves, get the net more just go for it. Mainly get the points over quicker any which way you can. Getting to the net certainly one of them. Game so she takes the game but still looks dog tired. She does take so well, much out of herself with those one. big booming forehands. You can hear the grunt and you can see the Suspension of all that energy. You can, the difference between the two, though, is watch how Sabatini falls off the ball. She goes back off the ball, not forward like Groff does. Oh. 
Religion, you talk about her being just 18 years old and running out of steam and wondering why. I think nervous tension has a lot to do with it in her case, and there's not much you can do about that. But in as much as it is, the wind comes back sometimes, too. If she can hang on, it may. You can see her talking to herself, trying to get herself back in intensity and energy. Fifteen all. Graf is keeping him moving all the time. That's a terrific shot again. Gee, that's not easy to get away with on a hard court. The Croft ball put, stands up. Croft put 40, so much understand on it, stayed low. You take a look at it. See how low this ball is to the net, and how low it bounces when it goes over. Two points now for four one. She's so exhausted. And Steffi Graf leads 4-1 in the third set. Looked like she was a little unhappy with the call on the baseline there, but not getting any help from the man in the chair. And indeed, well, she's not going to. 20,000 people, United Tennis Association, U.S. Tennis Association flag. They are doing a lot in this country as you look at Steffi Graf now. The USTA is in an effort to try to get more people both playing tennis and helping those who show a lot of promise. Also, we just started a junior development program. We're going to spend six and a half million dollars. Stan Smith is heading it up. Much like the British LTA have tried to do. Get a junior development program. Our program's great. We just don't have the players at the moment. Possibly not the coaches either. I think you've got to find some youngsters out there who are really hungry. Like some maybe soccer players that you have. Young soccer players or cricketer or some child who's in sport who's really hungry and wants it time. so badly he'll put in the time and effort. Yeah, we need it soon because the role models are going. The kids now don't, don't remember Virginia when she was playing. That's true. Remember, the four-game-to-one lead that Steffi Graf has represents only one serve break. So if Gabriella can hold on, it's not over. Sabatini leads. Sabatini behind. 4-1 in this third set. was a little half-hearted. 
love 15. Cavatini barely got to that drop shot. She's just playing on pure gut now. She's got no energy left. Fifteen all. And she needs so many more of inspirational shots like that. Fifteen thirty. Do you remember how tired Agassi got in the French when he was playing? He wore himself down. That's what it reminds me of. everything into his shots. Well, he hits the ball harder and flatter. There you go. Good preparation from Steffi Graf. And what I mean by good preparation, she gets the racket up, keeps her head up when you hit the ball. Two break points to go 5-1 up now for Steffi. Said when you play against somebody like Steffi Graf or an Andre Agassi or a Jimmy Connors or an Yvonne Lendl, they make you work so hard and cover so much territory, that'll happen. Fifteen low. That's what Chris Everett used to do as well, just wear you down. I feel the first game really of this match dictated the whole the rest of it. Steffi was down love 30 and ended up winning her serve in that first game of the first set. That was a major game looking back. Oh. 15 all. Sabatini needs so many more errors to come from the graph racket like that one. Post. Maybe Groff is thinking about shaking hands at the net right now. She better not. It looks as if she reminded herself. 30 all. Terrifying power. trying to get behind the Argentine. Hard to turn. Deuce. Maria Bueno was the last great South American player who won Grand Slam titles. Game 
three six six one. And in the end, she was completely overwhelmed. And it was the power that won the day. She's running over to embrace her father and her coach and her entourage. The question to me, Simon, is not so much the significance of what happened here today, but how many more times Steffi Graf can win the Grand Slam. Lever won it in 62, he won it in 69. In the interim, he could not play for the Grand Slam. How many times would he have won it in those intervening years? I think she's going to do it at least another two or three times. Billie Jean, do you think that's right? I think it's very possible. You have to remember she just turned 19 this year. So she's got a lot of years ahead of her, and she is a perfectionist, and she will keep improving. Here's the moment of victory. The moment when all those dreams came to reality. The ultimate in tennis belongs to her and to this man who guided her to the pinnacle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States Tennis Association, Mr. Gordon Jorgensen, has a special present for Steffi Graf. Gordon? Thank you. Uh, Steffi, what a special occasion this is. You know, you've had an outstanding year on the circuit, an outstanding two weeks here, and what a match you had with a very worthy opponent, Gabriella. A great match and a great tribute to you. You have to know how all of us here are proud of you and your accomplishments. And in this regard, as starters, we want to give you this gold bracelet that has four diamonds symbolizing your conquest of the four Grand Slams. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, before we speak with Steffi, we'd like to introduce a gentleman that 50 years ago was the first to ever win the Grand Slam, J. Donald Budge. Don? <laughs> Steffi? 1953 was Maureen Connolly, 1970 was Margaret Court, 1988, Steffi Graf. Can you just tell us what it feels like, what's going through your mind right now? Well, I'm very thrilled to be able to, to win that match today. And uh, it's hard really to describe the, the right feelings in the moment, but I'm very happy. Now you started in the Australian, you'd lose a set. You didn't lose a set in the French. You let one get away against Martina in the finals of Wimbledon, not too bad. And one set here. Has the pressure been very tough on you as it's built through the four tournaments? Oh sure, everybody was talking about now the last tournament, the US Open, how tough it's gonna be to win the last Grand Slam and went. So I was um, today a little bit, you know, a little bit not nervous, but I was very tired and uh, yeah, I was looking forward to how I can do, and um, so I'm just very happy. You have some people, I think, that are very special to you. Would you like to say thanks to them? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's my family, first of all, and a special thanks to my father, who really has been, you know, giving me everything I, I needed. And Special thanks to Pavel Slozil and uh, all my fans around the world. Thank you. <laughs> of course, Pavel Slozil, your coach who does so much with you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to present the championship trophy again, Mr. Gordon Jorgensen. Steffi, the biggest symbol of them all for your achievement here this week. On behalf of the United States Tennis Association and everyone here in this, in this stadium, we present you with the championship trophy and crown you Grand Slam winner. Don Budge and Steffi Graf.
back with the men's semi-finals after this break.